It is basically a relationship between uh, the memories of the buildings, events that have happened in the past, war events, etc., that actually build up identities and construct identities. Um, there is a particular reason for this, and uh, it is due to my own personal experiences. Uh, I come from a place in Italy that during World War II was totally destroyed and bombed. Um, and now, nowadays, the surrounding landscape, it's either a replica of what was there before, so it is what you would call a simulacrum, or uh, it is new buildings, and the new buildings, strangely enough, are all constructed around the war cemeteries that have been left. Um, all of this is the argument of the paper that these different elements, what they do, is they contribute to the construction of something in the imaginary of people that is the invisible monument. And culture, from this point of view, becomes an archaeological and culturally sedimented monument. And all the different elements of memories that are inherited, they create the present within which we live and the way in which we relate to the past and how we envisage the future. Um, <coughs> there is um, something that I would like to say and it's the fact that uh, the narratives uh, that we construct are uh, extremely important because they are a form of collective collaborations. And although they may seem not linked to the past events, Actually, they are fundamental in the construction of an alternative identity to what is the representation through history. Um, some people would also speak of the issues related to propaganda, but there is an official version of history that does not keep into consideration personal lives. And I think that particularly within the digital media, there is space for the construction of personal narratives. Um, this is one of the first artworks that I wanted to show. Um, it was uh, done in 2003 and um, it is um, going to be published in Leonardo, uh, the MIT Press Journal. It is called The River of Time and it is um, a set of uh, overlaid uh, elements in, uh, in a digital print and it's originally constructed as a painting and as a, 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 a print, a graphic print, um, which is then made as a digital final print. Uh, it is a very, uh, it's a very large piece as well. Um, yeah. The second one is called the destruction number two, and uh, again you have a series of overlays. And you will see that one of my activities, particularly from this point of view, is the reconstruction within the art piece of all the memories and new memories. And they are superimposed as well as pieces of information, data and places that come from all over the world that all of a sudden are collapsed in one single place. Why it is this? Because if you go through, for example, in my hometown, which is the city of Casino, if you go through there, you find people coming from all different parts of the world, from Russia, Poland, New Zealand, and etc., with their own lives. And it becomes extremely interesting to think that actually some of the structures within which I live in, 
contemporary democratic structures of Italy with all its problems and uh, successes actually have been determined by personal identities and stories of people that have died into the city. Um, this is another one of uh, the pieces and this was actually uh, a very important one. There are different versions and you can see for this particular one what I used when I was in London I actually use human blood, so it's an overlay of human blood over a set of pictures and uh, uh, prints all merged together. Um, I thought of using this quote, which is uh, social identities defined by membership in various social groups and personal, the idiosyncratic attributes that distinguish an individual from others. Social and personal identities are thought to lie at opposite ends of a continuum, becoming more or less salient depending on the context. And though, however, argues for an interplay between the two, suggesting that they are not easily separable. Well, what I thought that it was very interesting is the fact that actually there are collective and personal narratives, and these collective and personal narratives do construct then multiple forms of identities. And it is the interplays of these identities that actually generate the characteristics of a place. And here I wanted to switch and show some uh, examples of work. This is called Attached Echo. Um, it becomes very difficult when we are creating a monument, a memorial, or a visual image to represent something that is invisible. And people use, artists use different kind of elements, including sound. This is actually an artwork made with sound and re-evokes the sound of World War II in Germany, of airplanes bombing Germany. Um, you have another one, this is actually very interesting, it's about invisibility. The actual artwork is underneath the stones and uh, it's called the Square of the Invisible Monument. It's by Jochen Gers in 1993. And what is interesting about this is that the real stones were taken away. They were inscribed at the bottom. There was a nail placed into the stone and then they were placed face down. So it would be possible to distinguish them from any other stones. Um, what was interesting about this piece is that actually the artwork apparently does not exist. Now, the problem is not the existence, the visibility or invisibility of the artwork that I wanted to discuss so much here, but the strategy that then the artist used. Because at one point, when you create a new dealing with oral narratives, stories that are transmitted, they necessarily, after time, start to fade. So there is a process, a constant process, in which we keep on making things visible. And Gertz had to make this old monument visible in order for it to be known. So the strategy of what is called the invisible monument is actually very problematic, because what it is, it is, or sometimes it becomes, a strategy of communication which adopts marketing tools with artistic aims in order to explain certain kind of artistic practices and make them widely known to the public. Um, <clears throat> well, how is it possible then, creating these links between past and present, to make something that is visible at the same time invisible, or something that is invisible, make it visible. Well, uh, one of the possibilities that I found that has assisted me, it is actually the digital structure, because uh, it allows you to compare, overlay, just a pose, make collages of different kind of uh, uh, images, and places as well. Um, I can say one, one thing that I think is important uh, is the fact that the transmission of oral narratives of events sometimes is what you find walking through the city. 
It means that through your own personal memories of what has been told, what people have told you, could be your parents and your parents, just the narration that you have collaged all together, you walk through the city with this gaze, with this particular perspective, and you pinpoint all different elements, buildings, structures, within which things have happened. Um, and these are the elements that, if lived on a day during your daily life, they will build up your identity. They will build up your relationship to the world in general. Um, <clears throat> there is one thing that I wanted to go into, and is that sometimes, I mean, sometimes people inherit the trauma, the trauma of war, and um, and the problem is that the past before the war event, it always becomes a perfect past, something that cannot be criticized. And instead, the present and the future, the present in particular is a transitory state, and the future actually becomes a moment in which you can capture whatever aura was there before the event happened. Um, I wanted to use this quote to show you something. This is. Uh, Isaac and the Italians, what does it mean? Well, uh, this is a very funny story. When uh, it was the early 1990s, the first Gulf War happened, the Italians proved Isaac right. And they say, well, they showed a form of an adaptive behavior. When war was declared on Iraq, and Iraq was bombed, the first, immediately the first day, sugar, flour, pasta, so, so disappeared from uh, uh, the shops. And it was a neurotic reaction because uh, the models uh, of the war in Iraq would not, let's say, directly affect the Italians. But the fear of war and the relieving of the trauma led people to a response that was a, a response known, but a response that had no real consequence. And it was just a neurotic, non-adaptive behavior. Um, in the light of all of the things that I have uh, uh, mentioned so far, um, one of my artworks lives online, and uh, sometimes it is visible and sometimes it is invisible. And this is a personal choice. And it is a series of accumulated events that retrace, actually, something that happened to my mother when she was two and a half years old. Um, there were the bombings, the shrapnel cut her, uh, almost cut off her leg, and she was dying. And she was carried through the blue, blue line that you can see to a hospital. She almost died and she almost lost her leg, but she didn't. She was roughly two and a half years old. So this is, in a way, a collection of memories that are fading away, plus some of my interactions with those memories. And it is a long-standing process of documentation, which sometimes I find very difficult because these engagements become very personal narratives. And, uh, and there is almost, I feel, an invasion of privacy in describing them. And at the same time, there is a necessity in dealing with contemporary issues. And I'm thinking of all different sort of conflicts around the world that I find extremely, sometimes extremely upsetting. Uh, even if they're very, very far away, and it's very, I mean, you may think, okay, what does it have to do with you? It's something that I really have not understood. I'm really affected by the concept of war, and affected in a very negative way. Um, so these are our reconstructions that we recreate, we reinterpret the meaning and by mixing up past, present, and future. And what I think is that the digital media role plays or can play is that of offering multiple platforms to make visible the invisible individual narratives. Because otherwise, the individual narratives, the personal narratives disappear. They are not there anymore. And if they're not there anymore, nobody knows probably I feel of what people felt in 50 years' time about all different kinds of events that were happening around the world. Um, 
And I think that it's important why all of a sudden my work is becoming more visible, or at least this kind of work. And I think that digital media offers the possibility of interaction. You can build up communities, groups, and it offers the possibilities of sharing your individual narratives in a more personal way. And sometimes, I would say probably it's like sharing it with your friends, although you don't know them, you haven't seen them, and they are just online shadows. There are people that share in the same sort of values and aesthetic forms of interaction. Um, this is a bit of uh, a critique, if you wish, to the concept of the uh, invisible monument. Um, I guess that a monument that is invisible, it is also a monument that is uh, unknown. And some of my artworks actually are unknown. They have disappeared. They have, there are artworks that have no visual trace. They have actually been literally buried without having any records. So there is no photographic records, nothing. There is no title, there is absolutely nothing. They have disappeared and they've rotten away in different places across the world. Um, it is a choice. Um, what you have here is a picture that is, um, it seems, sort of a unified entity and instead is um, a mix between the old city of Casino, the one destroyed during the war, and the city of LA. So it shows almost like uh, it has, if you, if you see the real image of the print actually, it has very much the feeling of sort of a painting, idyllic, etc. And this kind of contrast are the things that I like. Um, this is more recent and this is called Under the Skin. And again, it's a mixed media digital print. Um, I particularly like the cracks that you actually see in the buildings. And uh, if anybody of you is familiar with the skyline of New York, you can actually recognize that they swear the Twin Towers. Um, again, this is a space that does not exist really. And uh, it is a conjunction of all different sort of buildings and they are, again, overlaid with uh, old images of uh, buildings that have been destroyed during the war. And this is another one. Usually you don't see people. There is probably a reason why you don't see people in my work. I find it very difficult sometimes to represent the tragedy of uh, people and personal stories. This is one of uh, the few. And it's uh, an idyllic representation of what was uh, the city of Casino, the specific before World War II. And I placed it within uh, the dawn of the Trump Tower in New York. Um, and it shows, let's say, the possibility of what things could have been, because what we always think about is what things could have been. This is about connections and disconnections. Um, it is not an image uh, that exists, it's buildings pieced together with a, with a local map that you can see of something that doesn't exist anymore and that was erased by war. Um, well, commonalities. I'm sort of, I mentioned this issue and it's all of a sudden one is able to discover, particularly within the virtual worlds, the possibilities that identities and the history is something that is common to many people. And although the responses are different, the strategies adopted are different, it seems that I would say there is a common scope in the sufferances that people are coming from. And also in what they want to achieve, which at the end of the, of the game, I guess, is a better society for themselves and better opportunities for themselves and the future. Um, Well, I would like to uh, say how is it possible to negotiate all these kind of complexities that are historical and related to an image when actually there is a limitation which is the image in itself. And uh, it is actually due to the goodwill of uh, the viewer. And in a way, my work requires quite a lot of, uh, if you wish, archaeological digging from the viewer in order to understand what the picture it is really. 
And it is something that relates to most of my, I guess, to most of my work, even when it is just a virtual reality environment or other media. And I think I will conclude with this. Thank you very much.